Hello everyone! You might have seen the other video I made where I demonstrate a very serious flaw in the filament input design on the Palo 2 and Palo 2 Pro. Because there is a gap between the filament detector switch and the filament channel in the injection molded casing, you risk having the filament jam when the pallet tries to eject it. And that leads to this. That leads to this. And that will ruin your day if it happens toward the end of a multi-day multi-spool print. So I decided to try to do something about it, and design this little widget. It is a small plastic cap that snaps over the detector switch and fills the gap and prevents the filament from getting stuck. I added the SDL for the cap to Tinyverse, so you can follow the link in the description and print a set for yourself if you wish. And here you see how to install it. First you have to remove the acrylic cover over the inputs. Throwing it over the table and nearly losing it is optional. Then you simply snap the cap over the switch like that. The first switch was pretty well centered, so I could just snap it on. The second switch was mounted rather crooked, so there was too much space on one side and too little on the other. So I had to loosen it and center it before snapping on the cap. Make sure the caps are properly seated. There is very little space between the caps and the acrylic cover, so if they are not seated all the way, the acrylic cover will be lifted, and it will not guide the filament properly towards the exit hole. This can lead to a filament jam. Now check that there is no binding. The switch lever should move freely and return to center without any hesitation. Then put the acrylic cover back on. Check that it is seated all the way down. It's a tight fit so you might have to sand the caps a little to make it seat properly. This is how it looks with the caps installed and the cover off. As you can see here, the cap filled the notch between the switch and the casing, and it provides a slanted wall that will push the filaments toward the exit rather than jamming it. And this is what it looks like with the cover on. Now let's test if it actually works. We have already loaded input 1 and 2 with filament, and now we started in multi-spool mode. The white filament is just a short stub with a typical bend that you have at the end of the filament where it was anchored to the spool. The bend is pretty much guaranteed to cause a jam if it points toward the switch and the caps is not installed. The red filament is there so it has something to switch to when the white runs out. Now it is about to run out. And as you can see, even though the filament was bent in the worst possible direction, it did not catch on the way out and the switch over to the red filament worked perfectly. Finally, I should be able to use multi spool mode on the pallet too. This fix, plus the external buffer that I designed and built earlier, should make it possible to reliably print in multi spool mode without being bitten by buffer undruns caused by the ludicrous design of the internal buffer or risk having massive jams caused by the ludicrous design of the filament inputs. Like I mentioned earlier, the SDL for printing the filament guides are on Thingiverse, so if you want to do this fix yourself, you can download it from there and print it. I assume no responsibility for your palette too if you do so though. If the cap eats your palette, you have my sympathy, but not much else. And it would be nice if you click the thumb that best describes your feeling towards this video. Bye bye!